PhD student in Australia. At the moment, I'm in Singapore um, for a tour in Southeast Asia to meet with young emerging, emerging leaders in rural locality and see what challenges they face on the issues to address. Today, we will have a meeting here. And um, I wondered, um, with my conversations in different universities across the globe, uh, there was a very strong remark on that we are living in very turbulent times, not only by economic challenges, but also on an ecological and social level. And as young people who are 51% of the world population in the age that we're in, 18 to 35 years, there is a stress on that we have an important responsibility to tackle the most pressing challenges of our century. In my conversations with young leaders here so far, I understood that they uh, struggle with finding a balance between academic excellence and finding meaning and giving back to society. And I wonder, you, you addressed this already, but I wonder what are the concrete pathways for them to find that balance, to excel and also give back to society in a more concrete way. I think finding the right balance uh, is always a difficult job for everyone, whether it's between work and life, whether it's between academic excellence and giving back to society. I don't see a contradiction between the two pursuits, um, but it's for each uh, individual to decide um, um, how to work that uh, that balance, and later on in life, you know, all of us have will have multiple de demands on our time, with family, with work, uh, with community, with leisure per uh, pursuits. Uh, it's always going to be a continuous struggle throughout one's life. Uh, there is no simple answer to that. I think one has to uh, just from time to time. Uh, and to try and correct course if necessary, uh, but I don't see any contradiction between pursuing academic excellence and giving back to society. I see that there are three people waiting for a question. Maybe I'll take all three of you in one go, and then you can sure, answer. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and keep your questions short, please. I, I just have a two-part question. I'm sorry, I'm Michelle. I am studying in my final year at SMU, and I'm also looking into how we can improve the SMU experience. So I have a two parts. One is, can you give us a concise definition of what a Singaporean student should be by the end of the education system? <laughs> and secondly, what is the unique role that SME can play, given that we are also here with four other institutions at this time? Can I reply to this question first, whether I can give a concise definition of what a Singapore student should be? The answer is very I cannot, so... Yeah. Yeah. The second question would be, what what's the unique role that SME can play in society now? Oh. I Shall should take the first questions first. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. Can we take the yeah the two other questions? Yes. Now? Yes. Hi, yes. uh, I'm uh, Dennis Ahn from uh, Nanyang Polytechnic School of Business Management. Uh, just a quick question, right? Um, as uh, Dr. Tan, as you mentioned. Uh, uh, entrepreneurship is a key uh, driver to Singapore's economy and, uh, new, and it's the new ideas of, uh, is important to our, for our future. Uh, considering Bill Gates, uh, Steve Jobs, who have not completed this higher uh, education, uh, what would you envision uh, to develop in higher education in Singapore that will cultivate uh, this entrepreneurial mindset? Soon be student of SET, hopefully to increase the student representation here. I understand you mentioned this now, there's a great risk in being a pioneer. So. Sorry, the great risk of being a pioneer. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, I think that is. Anyway, uh, my question, short question, the uh, yeah, upcoming National Day, uh, I'd like to ask what ideas might you have for keeping Singaporeans rooted to Singapore, you know, going elsewhere after they finish their higher education? I mean, th this is I understand, I mean, my perception of this is that this is largely uh, intangible things that keeps you Singapore rooted to Singapore, but uh, do you have any ideas perhaps of anything tangible that might help retain our Singaporeans? Okay, right. 
Well, first of all, I think the question on, on uh, entrepreneurship, I think that this will develop naturally because uh, I see that Singaporean students, uh, when they graduate, uh, 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 you know, uh, looking less towards saying that I've, I graduate, I will be I join this company, and I'll work there for the rest uh, of my life. We do need people like that who are happy in their work. But I think more and more Singaporeans will... I say, is there an area where I can launch my own business? And, uh, and uh, I think our universities all now, including SMU, uh, have not only courses but uh, also innovation funds. And I think that uh, this has been one of the major changes in our universities and polytechnics the last few years, that uh, the recognition that uh, the job of the institution is not only to teach and do research, but also to help uh, their students to launch uh, careers. And I think that uh, it's an area which I'm very happy with because it's a completely new mindset of the faculty that uh, they can see that this is a, a very exciting area. It takes time. Also, the government has in place many uh, schemes in order to help entrepreneurs. Uh, our venture capital industry has grown oh, many fold the last 10 years and all of this, we are building an ecosystem here, uh, which I think will uh, uh, help uh, young people to launch uh, their own careers or their own businesses. Now, the question about being a pioneer, I hope I've not discouraged you from joining SUTD. Uh, yes, being a pioneer is risky, but being a pioneer also is exciting because you're breaking new ground. For example, when SMU was first set up, the first graduate students were pioneers, and uh, and uh, you know they came in. I mean, they uh, were excited by what uh, they by what they see, and I think that they have never regretted their decision to come to us. And many of them could have gone to more established universities like NUS or NTU, uh, but they took a chance and they succeeded. And I think it uh, speaks well of them that they have this uh, determination and they are, they are excited by the vision. Then the other question about whether Singaporeans should go overseas and work, I think this is inevitable because the world is a globalized economy now. Singapore is part of that. You will find that whatever job you do, whatever pro profession you're working in, you will find part of our life uh, having to work overseas. And, uh, and I think that uh, fundamentally, uh, this is good for Singapore. I think one of the saying is that one of one of the jobs of schools, educational institutions, is uh, actually to give our people uh, roots in Singapore, while giving them wings to spread uh, their abilities abroad. So these are two very important components. So Singapore will become more international in the coming years but I hope that uh, they will continue to have very strong roots in Singapore and I think that uh, this is something which uh, is a natural development of Singapore being an international globalized city. The final question about what I see for SMU in the coming years, is, uh, I will hand over to Professor Arnold <laughs> Mayer to answer that question. Thank you. I will not use this as a platform to give you my strategy. Uh, but before I thank you, Dr. Tan, I would like to um, ask you a last question. And that is, uh, we, you were referring in your speech to say that many of us will have not one, two, three, or four careers, um, uh, and that uh, it is for uh, reasons of economic but also self-fulfillment that one changes career. We all know in this room that you want to change career. Uh, um, uh, and I'll also know from my colleagues in the law school that the um, constraints on this new job, the constitutional constraints, are quite quite uh, strong. Uh, but maybe you can give us a glimpse of what you think a president can do uh, to further education in Singapore. Well, uh, let me say that I took this decision to run for the presidency after a great deal of thought. Uh, it was extremely happy as a private citizen uh, uh, with my jobs at GIC and SPH uh, 
and uh, to give it all up is uh, to run for the presidency. First of all, a very great risk, uh, but also uh, you know giving up two jobs which I which I love uh, and going to a new c career uh, is a difficult decision. But I did it because not because I'm convinced I will win; it's a risk, but because I felt that uh, giving the challenges which Singapore faces uh, is uh, I. I have to try so that uh, uh, if I make a, if I can make a contribution to uh, ensuring that Singapore remains uh, uh, prosperous and progress, improve the lives of Singaporeans, then I think it's uh, it will be my duty to try, uh, and uh, I hope that uh, I will be able to be given that opportunity to serve Singapore and Singaporeans again. In the area of education, I think the presidency, whoever he is, uh, can actually play a very great role because uh, while the president doesn't have executive authority through his influence, through the areas which he concentrates on, uh, through the causes which he champions, uh, can make a great impact. And in the area of education, I think this is particularly true. So with regard to schools, for example, uh, the fundamental starting point for all education, I think the president can, uh, by his presence, uh, his patronage, uh, his visits to schools, talks to teachers, principals, students, I think help to maintain these very high standards which we have and to further improve on them. Also, uh, with regard to the ITs, the polytechnics and the universities, uh, for example, Mr. Nathan has spent a great deal of time uh, with the universities. I know he enjoys it. And I think that uh, not, not only uh, is an area which the president can and should spend a lot of time on, I think it's the uh, most enjoyable activity, meeting with students, with faculty, and uh, perhaps it's one of the areas which uh, is uh, one of the more one of the areas which the uh, president can uh, look forward to, and I've always enjoyed my interactions with uh, uh, schools, with uh, teachers, with uh, students, uh, with faculty, students in the polis, uh, IT, and with the universities. I've come to SMU many times, and uh, I think it's always, uh, on each visit I've learned something, I've uh, met new people, uh, I've had a chance to interact with students, and I think that this uh, recharges you and gives you a very optimistic outlook ahead. And that's the beauty of working with young people. Thank you very much.